But first up, he is an environmental activist and author of the novel Radio Free Vermont, A Fable of Resistance. Bill McKibben, the lion of the movements. Bill, how are you? Great to see you, sir. Okay. So uh, it's fitting you're here on our last show because this has been a year where we saw terrible things happen with the environmental movement. Uh, and I was very dismayed to see last week that the Paris Accords, which were signed two years ago, none of the industrialized countries are even close to meeting their marks and they're not mandatory. The, the scariest in a way was what happened in China where they've actually been pretty good about putting in a lot of renewable power. Last year their coal went up coal use went up because they had a wicked drought, California-style drought, and they couldn't run their hydroelectric dams. This is the sort of thing that's starting to happen. The vicious feedback cycles are starting to kick in. The, the, we had a record rise, three parts per million, in the amount of carbon in the atmosphere last year, and we're afraid it's because oceans, forests have been damaged to the point where they're no longer absorbing carbon as quickly as they used to. So we're right on the edge. It's the moment to be moving fast. Yeah, I've heard that for years. We're mm. right on the edge. we got to start moving fast. Depend. Uh, I mean, in some ways, we're right over the edge. I was in yes, Sonoma I, last yeah. you know, two nights ago talking with people who'd come through the fires. I mean, this is as close as we get to sort of the definition of the good life in America. Beautiful place, huge vats of wine everywhere. There's people fleeing for their lives and lots of them not making it out. That kind of thing happens someplace on this planet every day now. Yeah. And, you know, there's another conference going on this week in Bonn, Germany, and the Trump administration showed up with a plan <clears throat> for coal. They're trolling the climate agreement meetings now. They got trolled right back. All 400 people who were at the, sitting in the room for this coal presentation just got up and left. And the, um, the, the craziness of it, I mean, the rest of the world's like, oh, electric cars, solar batteries, whatever. The Trump administration's like, we've got some great 18th century technology that we'd like yeah. to show you here. You know. Yeah, Rick Perry wants to subsidize coal and, and maybe whale oil after that. I, I, I mean, <laughs> when you think about that, Someone did a study, a report, a few weeks ago. There's more people in America who work at Arby's roast beef sandwiches than mine coal. In a rational world, we'd oh, yeah. be having Oval Office summits on sort of roast beef policy, you know? Um, <laughs> I mean, the real jobs, the, the, the real thing we should be subsidizing is sun and wind, which we desperately need. Have you ever convinced a denier? Have you ever been able to, to take someone aside and just talk to them calmly and rationally and have them go, wow, I, I see your point. I, I must have been wrong all these years. This is, this is the right question the week before Thanksgiving. Um, my advice would be don't wreck dinner sort of trying to argue with your crazy uncle. The, um, <laughs> Most, most people, the 70% of Americans understand what's going on. The 30% who don't aren't going to be convinced by the next you know, study of infrared absorption patterns in the uh, stratosphere or whatever. They believe what they believe for ideological reasons. If you spent the last 30 years kind of marinating in Rush Limbaugh, you'd be you know, impervious to reason, too. It's, and so yeah. I think with, I think the, uh, the right, the right response is to say, we got to take that 70% and get them active and engaged in this fight, or at least some part of them. If you just can't stand it at Thanksgiving, you know, turn to them and say, you may not believe in global warming, but global warming believes in you. Right. <laughs> And uh, I want to get your opinion on the economics of this because I don't think this is brought up enough that economics really, I mean, we know how it affects the environment uh, and, and the argument that it's going to ruin jobs, which is, of course, not true. But it's also true that the people who uh, are poor generally don't care about the environment when you cannot blame them because well, they have, the, the argument is they have more immediate problems and they do. I'm just making the point yeah. that income inequality very much impacts em environmental progress. As long as people are living hand to mouth, they kind of can't be... I'd always heard this, right? 
it, it, environmentalism is something that rich white people do. If you didn't know where your next meal was coming from, you wouldn't be right. environmentalist. When we started organizing 350.org, first thing we did was this global day of action. We had 5,200 demonstrations <coughs> in 181 countries. People were sending in pictures from every corner of the planet. It took me about half an hour of watching those come in on Flickr to realize that pretty much everybody we were working with was poor, black, brown, Asian, young, because that's what the world consists of. I think you can make a pretty good argument at this point that rich white people may represent more of the environmental problem. Oh, they uh, def solution. Yeah, definitely <laughs> use more resources, yeah. yes. Uh, and they kind of get in the way of things, too. I mean, you know. Those that's, are rich white people. That's Mr. Trump. Self-loathing yeah. clapping. Uh, <laughs> So um, let me ask you about this elephant thing, because I saw a great documentary this year called When Giants Fall. I think mm. you can yep. Google it and you'll see it. You can see it on the Internet. And it's about the elephants and their plight. And Trump, he's kind of hedging on it now. Yeah, he but said, he was saying yesterday they were going to undo the Obama rule, because we have to undo everything Obama did, of course, and that you couldn't take your trophies from killed elephants back here to the United States. What do you think of that? Because there actually are some environmental people what uh, you know what this I'm going to say? This is just I the agree. Don Jr. Protection Act. You know, right. bring back the bring back the tusk of the thing you cut. The, and it goes hand in hand with. I mean, he, he's he's saying we're going to take a pause on this one today because there was so much resistance to it. Maybe he could also perhaps pause the new rule they put into effect earlier this year that lets you lets hunters shoot hibernating bears in their dens. Um, oh, I, I mean, didn't hear that. Um, Look, I think there's... Because they're sportsmen. Bill. I think there's a contest in the White House every day. Wow. What's the cruelest thing you can think of? Right. And whoever wins gets to wear the red hat for the, you know, next day or something. It's just, it's insane. All right. Do we have any hope, Bill? You, you keep yeah. doing what... We've got lots. I mean, the hope is in the resistance. And right. it's been a good but year. It's, it's got to start with resistance. politics. Well, that's right. And right. we saw in Virginia that the resistance yes. is starting to electoralize. <laughs> So we'll go forward with that on the new year. Thank Absolutely. you, Bill. You're a hero for what you do. All right. Bill McKibben, everybody.